Somebody printed this out really small, and for these old eyes, um, I'm, I'm having a hard time. So, somebody asked on one of the videos we did, um, how many yards of fabric uh, did I need for a piano bench? And I think that was the crank piano bench, if I'm not mistaken, that my son put some uh, crazy graphics on. He's got me cranking up this autumn, and all of a sudden, ba-boom, he has an explosion. He likes to have fun with this, uh, some, of the, some of the graphics, so... But that ottoman, um, I believe, took 2.5 yards of fabric. Um, well, that was what was ordered. We might have had a little extra left over, but that's fine. It's always uh, Jimmy, actually, on his chair. He, he, had, he, he ordered a lot of fabric because he wasn't sure. I'd probably recommend that in the beginning, if, if you're not sure, um, to order a little extra, maybe 20% more uh, fabric. <clears throat> so the other question we have is from... Lula, are you leaving the towel in that place? This is in reference to another video that I did about store-bought furniture, really low price point furniture. And um, they were, a customer was having a problem with, with, with the overall seating. And people bring cushions to me all the time. The first thing somebody thinks about on a loose cushion, when it starts to feel horrible, that it's the foam and they want to replace it. It usually isn't the first thing that it goes. If you have a five-year-old piece of furniture and you're not sitting well in it at all, it's an overall seating experience. So you're just going to spend money uh, needlessly. So when people come to me, I tell them that. So on that lower price point furniture, they don't want to be spending a lot of money on a cushion. It's not going to do anything. So in this particular video, I actually had a solution, a temporary solution. I know, and I know. It's just to extend the life of the piece of furniture to make it comfortable because I think in the, in the end they're just going to throw it away. So what I suggested they do is take a blanket, fold it in thirds, and run it the length of the sofa underneath the cushions. Usually that's a good solution to a problem like that. Cheap solutions. It, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, it, it wouldn't hurt to try it, put it that way. Um, I can't tell you how many people bring cushions to me when I say I, I don't do them. Um, that that's not your problem. Um, or that I can reverse a cushion sometimes. A foam cushion will collapse in the front, so you could take it out and reverse it, and you, and you start with the new front, a new cushion basically. So try to extend the life of even the, the low price furniture as much as you can. That's what I say. So that's a good question. Um, the next one's from Colleen. Uh, she says, where can I purchase the materials you use in, uh, to fix these cushions? Now that's a good question. Most of your um, arts and crafts store will have loose Dacron, and will or even have the roll Dacron, um, and and I think that's what she's referring to. That's where you can get it. Um, she goes on. You may have just helped me decide to keep our sofa. Thank you. Well, there you go. I mean, um, if the fabric is okay, why not try to extend the life as much as you can? You know, that's what I say. Life is so important, right? Any type of life, even the life of a sofa, right? Right, Jimmy? Absolutely. I, I think the older furniture is the better way to go. I, I do anything. anything. If a frame is solid on a chair or a sofa or a love seat, I say try to, try to see what you can do with it. You're an upholsterer's best friend. Uh, the only other person or thing is a cat. A cat is an upholsterer's best I would say cats, cats, dogs, husbands, kids, and Jimmy now. He's, 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 he's coming up to fourth place. <laughs> fourth place? <laughs> <laughs> and so now Janine, and by the way, Janine's one of our first and most favorite, uh, you know, people that we have, uh, customers and, and uh, viewer. And she says, um, that's a great idea to add tailored slip covers to offer clients who can't afford reupholstery. So I am uh, in the future in this Broadway upholstery school. We're going to have we're going to have show you. Um, we're going to have a guest come in. She's really good. Um, show you how to do a slip covers. She's a really good teacher, um, and and um, I think you're going to enjoy those. And I agree with Janine. Um, a lot of people out there are sewing. Not many people are actually ripping furniture apart and upholstery. And we obviously we do have some uh, some, and we hope that they watch our channel, but. I think there are more people out there who can sell. So I think this is going to be a great idea with the new things that we're going to be offering. But Janine goes on to say, I have sewn for years and made several tailored slip covers for lounges and chairs for myself. It will help the customer to add another 
item to what's off it. I, I agree. would love to see, to see that. that. Yeah, and slip covers, Jimmy. Um, I think are very popular. They, 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 they seem to popular. cycle out a little bit. They were, they are now again. Are they? Are they? Yeah, I think it, 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 I don't know, I can't figure it out. Maybe it shifts with the, if the shift is with the economy. I, I don't know. I've never been able to figure out. Well, when you have a chair or even, like you say, a social, you can do match up, up the, 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 the pillows and the, the, the covers to, you know, you know the furniture. furniture. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, that, that I remember, remember my mother doing that a couple of times. times. See? You know? She had a sewing machine, she had some talent, and she made a slip cover and saved herself thousands yeah. of dollars. Yeah, I remember, I, remember I, I think sometimes, too, um, uh, Sears and Robux, when they were big, yeah, they had things like that. You could go and say, okay. You mean the pre-made slip covers? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, the so the pre-made slip covers, so they're two, two different there's a there's a loose fitting there's three categories there's okay. a store bought slip cover okay. which they say fits all but really doesn't it's very sloppy looking there's tailored slip covers which which for a good slip cover person they can actually get that almost looking like it had been upholstered okay. right and then there's the third uh, custom slip covers that are more casual or loose so that's three categories that I know of slip covers I don't like so much. They rely a lot on the elastic fabrics, which don't last as long. So I, right. and I don't think it looks as good. But but then for somebody in a situation where they need something to look good quick and they don't have a, they don't do the sewing, that's 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 I don't I don't object to it. Why not? You know, yeah. save some money. Um, Janine has another question in here. I like how you offer choices for both clients and students. You can. You can um, go to the full traditional route or restore closely to how the original was to modify it or how we want today. Um, it's the best of both worlds. And, and then there's another category, Janine, of pieces that you can do half and half, like um, half of a restoration, for instance, the seats. And Erica is another uh, good client of ours. We're going to be doing a custom-made video for her, and we're waiting for the right piece, and she's being patient, and thank you. For Erica for that. Hers looks like it's going to be a, um, half and half. She needs to restore the seat, but everything else, it's a, it's a beautiful French uh, settee, and, and the French, uh, which I've told her, have a really unique and really stylized way that they do things. Underneath the fabric, you never know it. I mean, um, you wouldn't believe the stitching work that's underneath this. So we're going to try to keep as much of the original as we can on hers, on the rest of it. The seat, you know, we need to restore, but that's an example. So yeah, the, when I'm talking to a client, we need to go over these because it reflects a price, you know, and we, we're trying to uh, do this for as um, inexpensively as we can. So if it means that we could just reupholster, meaning taking the old, I make it sound easy, taking the old fabric off and replace it with new fabric, that's fine, or restoring the entire piece down to the frame, or restoring half, like the seat or whatever. So we're offering those. Thank you for noticing that, Janine. That that's, and we do the same thing like with Jimmy. Did it with Jimmy. Jimmy had, um, he had a drop-in unit on this seat, a drop-in, it's called Marshall unit. There was nothing wrong with it as it was. So there was really no need in tearing it apart and starting all over again with that. So his, his was, um, did, but the outer portion of his seat needed restoration. So it was a half and half on that. In his back. Did you do any extra work on the back on that, Jimmy? I can't remember. Did you? No, I, I used the, the decor on the back too. Yeah, but did you web it? Did you re-web it? Uh, I don't yeah, you did. I'm going to turn it around to show people what Jimmy did on the back. He had to restore the back because it was falling in, remember? They had that cheap foam, that's right. They had, they, it wasn't done well. You know what, it, in all fairness, I was thinking about this, Jimmy. We were a little unfair with whoever did it. Because I think we were saying, look how sparse they were. Look how we used the word sparse, I think. Well, I think it was how they did it. It seemed like, again, that chair has three different types of styles. But do you know what the, do you know what it was? Now look how, look how ample Jimmy, Jimmy, uh, we live in a great time, you guys. We live in a great, great times that we have supplies. We live in a great times that supplies are, are shipped almost overnight to us. We live in wonderful times that the, the pricing is, is somewhat reasonable. The shipping on these things reasonable, right? 
but there was a time during World War II where these materials were not available. And I think that this chair was made or re redone during the war, and they had sparse materials to use. They, they had minimum materials, but they did get the job done, okay. right? Not as well as we did. I mean, I mean, Jimmy well, put, that put a, a lot. What was that dated from? What, what that, was that was the original in there. So that was before the war. So this oh. this is this chair is about 1920, oh my God. and the. The restoration or the reupholstering that was done mm -hmm. was in the 40s, definitely. The war so the years. fabric I took off was from the 40s. Yeah, we see a lot of uh, furniture from the war years, and this was one of them. I mean, the reupholstery. So, are there any questions, Patrick, out there yet? Not yet. Any questions? Any questions? Not yet. So let's go. We we got a lot to do, Jimmy. I'm not ignoring Jimmy. I'm trying no, not I'm, to. No, I'm listening because I, I want to hear, hear what we have to do. This is an interesting question from Janine. I like this question. She says, I have a huge amount of Italian button twine, not Italian spring twine, uh, jute or similar, that was sold to me as spring tying twine when I knew less than nothing, she says. And I'm hoping that I could make spring twine by using three lengths twisted together with an electric drill to form a new thicker twine. The original twine cost ninety dollars, and I can't afford to, you know, buy one right now, which, which is I can understand. What are your thoughts about my solution? Will it stand up to years of wear? Is my main concern. Thank you for all your help. So, um, you know that um, the most important thing. It sounds like you're going to have a twine strong enough to be used. Let's let's say that. But the most important thing about it being jute or similar, if it's jute, you're going to have a good locking knot. And I definitely think you should knot it. Don't, don't, sometimes on, when we're tying springs, we cross over and not knot it. In this case, I think you're going to be okay as long as you knot it, knot each, each tie. Don't cross over. And you should be you should be fine. I like I love this uh, the way you're thinking to reuse things. I mean that's what upholsterers do best. I think right reuse. Um, but that was a that's a really good question, Janine. Really good. And this came Where's in Jean's three from? weeks ago, so I'm sorry it took so long to answer. What's that? Where's she from? I'm not sure. We have people. Jimmy's asking where people come from, but we, you Jean's know, she's from Australia, I think. Oh, from Australia, wow. yeah, I think she is because we asked that question about extreme upholstering, and Janine answered that very nice. Oh, extreme ironing, sorry. And Janine answered that question for us that there is such a thing, Jimmy, as extreme well, ironing. I think we could practice that. I don't know, maybe we can jump off a rooftop or something, see what we can do. Make sure you wear a parachute. Yeah, well, it would have to be a very quick opening parachute. <laughs> you know? Um, the next question is from Raina. She, she says, uh, why the pinch pleat? We, I did a, I think I showed how to stuff a mid-century cushion that was done. So this particular mid-century cushion had a style that the customer wanted uh, to keep it and they were pinch pleated. And I was just showing how to, how to um, it was a quick fix. It was a technique we were showing, but they were, they were wondering why, why uh, a pinch pleat? Um, why not square off the front like a box cushion with no piping or with piping? And the answer is the customer wanted it the same way. So um, we always listen to the customer. As a matter of fact, on that particular, there were four cushions on that. And on that particular mid-century sofa, the cushions don't even butt up with one another like a, a, you would normally think. They, the designer, and they all design these things differently, had a gap in between each cushion. So they wanted individual seating. And they didn't want any overlap, anybody sitting on a seam and things like that. So it was interesting. Um, we have a question from, I'm not even going to try to pronounce uh, his name. Actually, oh, I think it's a nickname. No, I, I, when I first looked at it, I thought it was a foreign name, but what it actually says is Catnip Kit Kat. I think I can, I can handle that. <laughs> and Catnip Kit Kat asks, I just found this video recently. Now I'm trying to fix the sags on my bed springs. Where I am, it would cost just about the same to buy a new box spring as it would to import the twine you were using. So I bought much, much less expensive jute twine, and I'm doubling it up. This is similar to Janine's question. I also have two separate springs from an old sulfur. I can weave into the middle of the bed, 
Um, if I find it needs more support, if it doesn't work out, no big deal because I will always need twine rope for repairing the cat towel I have. And I'll just suck it up and buy a mattress of some sort. That's, I love this. I love people trying to save money by doing things like this, these little home repairs. That's what I'm trying to do with the quick tips, which this, I believe, no, he didn't get this from the quick tips or anything like this. This was an eight-way tie tutorial. So hopefully, Jimmy, while, while he's in that old mattress, he comes across some money, right? Yeah, I, I always kind of like a little bit of, you know, a little return for my work. <laughs> yeah. If it works for me, it works for him. Yeah, I always hear about people finding money or finding things and making a lot, but it, you know, that never happens to me. I found a... I found a penny once. What about you? Did you ever find uh, it? No, I actually found dust balls. But that's, you know. that's it. I found more than that in a penny, right? Yeah, well, I don't know. Unless it's something of a collector's, you know, like a 1925. 55 thing. double die? That, that's worth Well, I don't know. We could probably go to dinner with that. <laughs> yeah, worth a lot of money. Now, Dad, we have, have a question. question. We have a question. This is from Lucas. Lucas, um, I know. I'm, I'm working on a set of Arn Vodder for France and Son dining chairs. chairs. And they have a lip at the bottom of the seat where it connects to the frame, like where it gets screwed onto the frame. And that's it. Maybe he just wants some advice on that. So read that again. So it says, I'm working on a set of Arne, A-R-N-E-V-O-D-D-E-R, -E -E for France and Son, dining chairs. And they have a lip at the bottom of the seat where it connects to the frame, like where it's screwed into the frame. He says, what would be the best way of stretching the fabric across the seat and keep it flush to the frame in order, to, in order for the seat to fit flush? So that's a really good question. Sometimes, I think I know what you're talking about. Sometimes on these detachable seats, when you put them on, there's a gap. I think that's what he's referring to. So the best way, there's two ways you can do it. There's, uh, if you don't want a base weld, a separate weld to run along the bottom that will fill the gap in nicely and it, it, it finishes it off nice if you don't like that you can put a welt before you upholster the piece you could put a welt along the edge then upholster the piece that also will fill that gap up nicely but when you do that you need to make sure that you use the tack tape in order to tighten that piping um, so that when you wrap it it doesn't roll on you so that's a very good question. And I, you know what I like about Lucas's question is that it could tell that this guy's got a, a really good attention to detail. Mm. And if he's doing it for somebody else or if he's doing it for himself, it doesn't matter. He's, it tells me that he has a good attention to detail. So that's a good thing when we're doing a post. We need more work. like him in this world, Kevin. Yeah, Lucas, keep up the good work. I don't know. Maybe you can uh, answer a question. How long have you been upholstering? I'd like you to, I'd like you to answer that. And I hope I answered your question. So he said thank you, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. So the next omnipotent mama, she checks in. She checked in three, mama. three oh, weeks man. ago, though. Gee, I'm sorry. Some of these are old, and I really apologize that we haven't we haven't caught up with these. Um, she says for she's been for sewing since I don't have the room or kind of uh, the machine you use. I bought a vintage necky N E C C H I. It's circa 1957. And has a one amp motor. It had it was the Ferrari of machines in its day. It's the closest to power to a professional I can get for a home machine. I picked it up on eBay. Makes the nicest stitches you've ever seen. It has a high shank, so I can get feet for it and for a single double pipe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share a little secret and upholstery, you guys. <clears throat> Unless you're doing leather work, and now. I don't know too many people who are doing leather sofas or chairs these days, so the issue never comes up with me. And I have a high volume, I do a lot of work, and I have a machine, it's, a, it's probably just like this as far as um, capability. The capability, it's, it's a fine, jukey machine. It would be considered light industrial weight. It's not a heavy industrial weight at all. You don't need to overkill in the machine in the upholstery business, unless, like I said, if, you do, if you're getting into a lot of leather. Now, I wouldn't do leather on this machine. So, and that we don't do a lot of leather because leather is prohibitive. It's very expensive. Um, so, I think that she did great with this machine. Um, if you do your research um, on older machines, sometimes they're nice. 
I, I was working on a treadle machine, Jimmy. Can you believe that when I first started? How long ago was that, Kevin? Oh, I'm sorry. That was just what? Last no. week? No, they did have electricity at that point. Really? It's just that this happened did to be a have to kind of like churn the, churn the, <laughs> No, you know how you do that? You do it with your foot. You, yeah. You're constantly hitting with your foot, right? Well, my mother had one that you she used a leg. Do you remember a guy on PBS? I'm going to mention his name. I don't care. Who's is PBS watching? Let him, let him watch. Uh, Woodhouse was his name. He did everything and he did everything by hand, no electricity. Uh, he ran his lathes with the, with that treadle. Everything was run, the saws and everything else. And huh? Came down well, he was a boy. You should have seen this guy work. And he, well, some of those guys, that's what they trained on. But they didn't have any electricity. He could do everything. Yeah, he, he could he, build a table without any lights. Right, but if you're a, if you're a trained carpenter and you start off with the typical hand saws and uh, hand drills and so on, that's the way you're going to go. Yeah. I didn't you know, buy this guy. You know how to use it. You know that when you're using a hand drill versus on, on pine versus oak, mm -hmm. you know the difference. Yeah. You know, you know the techniques you would yeah. have to do to finish it off. It oak being a lot harder than pine. Jimmy, you're very resourceful. Actually, Jimmy did the refinishing on his chair here that we have up here. Yeah. Right? yeah. I love doing that part. Now, Lauren says there's a video, it's called How to Apply Leather to a Drop-In Seat. I just told you I don't do leather, but this was, the, this was an upholstered seat. Um, this was also a YouTube video, if you want to see it. Thank you for making this video. You have mentioned your U-Cover tutorial in several videos. We did, <coughs> we did an ottoman that we presented. Yeah, I, I, I responded to that, and oh, I sent did. her the link, so she oh, should be good to go. Well, just to let everybody else know that, you can get that now, um, that whole kit, plus the book, at broadwayupholsteryschool.com. Jimmy had a question you were asking about the book on that today, weren't you, about something Well, about what was inside the book, what tips you have, what, any quick tips? like? Very guess? basic tips, but it covers everything. Okay. But it's just everything basic. Okay. So there is a segment, you were asking about fabric, there is a fabric cutting seg segment in there, but not as in-depth as what you did today, okay. because it's only an autumn. Yeah, but right. people tie springs. They they attach they attach Dacron. They 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 use the jute twine that Janine was mentioning. Mm -hmm. They use spring. They use uh, regular tufting twine. The webbing, the burlap, the cambric. It covers a lot. Wow. Um, but I think it's the greatest value for people out there who can't get to an adult ed class and they want to be self taught. It's a great start or up. A plus. They get I, I give out my source as to where they can get the best supplies. And they have extra supplies that they get for, with mm -hmm. that. So it's a great bargain, I think. And I'm giving away my sources. I'm giving away well, my... Well, that's worth millions, right? <laughs> well, I think it's a good, it's a, in good faith, you know, because I'm only interested in the, in the instructional videos, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. that's what we do best here at Broadway Upholstery School and Upholstery on Broadway. So let's go to the next question. Um, she said, what's this? Uh, Patrick answered that. So Janine says, very interesting chair. I'm not sure what chair she's talking about. Oh, this is a, <laughs> we just recently, this was one day ago, Janine, right? So I'm catching up, I'm catching up, you guys. It says, a very interesting chair. Great tips, thank you. Your thumbnail of the Cyclops tricked me for a few seconds. So we had a chair that had a, a big button right in the middle, and it was a manufactured, recently manufactured chair. And we called it the Cyclops chair. And I'm sorry, I'm going to apologize to any Cyclopses that might be out there. That we we try not, we're not doing that to make fun of you. It's just that's what it reminded me of. I used to watch these old cartoons with this. What was that cartoon, Jimmy, that had that mean-looking Cyclops in it? Or was that a, a that was Christmas? That was a Bugs Bunny character. One of the Bugs Bunny. Or was it a Christmas special where there was that monster that the side? But a very hairy one. Yeah. I know the character. I don't remember the name of him. You don't know the name of him? No. See, okay. there you go. Now you're going to make me work tonight. I'm well, I think there's two. There's two areas where it's safe to pick on, right? Yeah. Cyclopses and what's the other one? Unicorns, because there really isn't any unicorns, right? Uh, it, it used to be the circus was the only people that actually had the unicorns. I don't know how they kind of kept that to themselves. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Neanderthals. We could pick on Neanderthals, right? Uh, I, you better be careful with that. Be, <laughs> God knows, you know. Could be, could be I've like, never met a Neanderthal. Oh, well, well, may, well maybe. You know, yeah. you probably have one living at only just a few blocks down, so, you know. 
By the way, I'm the loss of the Neanderthal. Are you, Jimmy? Are you no, no, you know no. what? I like a man that can admit his faults. And if you're if you're saying that you you know you're more like a Neanderthal than than uh, you know, I, I admire that. Okay, well. So for our next question, now this needle isn't for you, Jimmy. Don't worry. I'm not, I'm not going to use it to def me? to deflate your ego. <laughs> But it's the next question is from Lauren. She says, uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge. What regulator do you, do you use? They come in different sizes. Some have handles. I don't like those particularly because it gives you too much torque. So I like the, the metal handle. And um, I think this is a 10 inch regulator. They have them smaller, they have them bigger, but this is what I like. Um, the thing about a regulator is you have to make sure that you're really connected to the point because you're doing some fine work. So if you have too much of a handle up here, you're too rough, I find. So you need to really get a good feel. Um, I guess everybody's different too, but that's what I use. It's just pretty basic. Um, let's go on to the next page. And this is three weeks ago. We're going all over the place here. Um, I love the idea of custom videos. I have three projects that I would love the kind of assistance with. I have a signed Mason Jensen piece from Paris. Well, this is what I was talking about earlier. Patrick, this is Omnipotent Mama. Yeah, that's her stage name, I guess. But Oh, you know that's Erica. Right? And, and we already, yeah, we, we already we talked about this. The, uh, right. the product so that, that she already sent, sent to us, us which, which we're uh, in, in search, search for. for. Yes, so we're, I think we're up to date with you um, on this one, but, and I, I, I mentioned earlier, um, I'm just waiting for that piece of furniture to come in. We're gonna, what we're going to do for everybody else is uh, we're going to custom make this video, and, and it's hers and hers alone. Um, and we can do that for everybody, um, even you, Jimmy. Oh, no, I'm in the battle for this. <laughs> I need the hear time. <laughs> So Janine has a question, another question. Interesting how large the measurements seem for the size of the chair. They really, now she's talking about the tub chair. Um, and this is really interesting. She, Janine's very intuitive. She, she's going to be, she's going to I wish she would live closer. We could have her. I'd like to have her. She could come in. Her as a student here. Oh, yeah. my God. She'd but I great. think she lives way far, far away. Well, we'll just, I think, have half a, we'll have to go. We'll yeah. just have to take a trip. Yeah. So she says, it's, She's interesting how large the measurements seem to be for the size of the chair. There really seems to be an art almost in estimating how much fabric you need. Uh, and if you, if you are a beginner, would you cut, pe cut paper pieces to the measurements and lay them out to determine how much fabric you needed? You know, I, I really think that this is just overthinking it. Um, I, I've had engineers in my, in my class that definitely would overthink the whole thing. I had an engineer once blueprint out. I, I was teaching a, a class and about, you know, we have a very basic way that we present fabric and how to cut it uh, right. and how to measure it, really. It's and pretty basic. Into overdrive. I think you can really overthink it. I think when you, if you're a manufacturer and you're manufacturing 10,000 sofas, you mm -hmm. definitely need to blueprint it and think about it, have a team to figure out because if you're miscalculating fabric amounts on something like that, it could translate into profit loss, right? But um, I think that the way we do it um, with, and, and I know Janine's watching that tub chair um, video, but this is how we do it, pretty basic. I have two slash lines, I have an up and down, I have a side to side. We measure each piece and we add three inches and that's it. Um, I think that if that helps you now, that, that said, there are different style learners. I try to respect uh, the way people learn. Mm -hmm. we, we have different learners. And I, I tell you a little story. Um, it helps if you're an upholsterer and you can keep an image in your head. So with me, um, I can put this chair in my head. I can close my eyes and I can see this chair in my mind's eye. I can see each section of the chair. I, I can visualize it. So when I first started teaching, um, I was not an experienced teacher. I assumed that everybody could do that, Jimmy. But not everybody can do that. No, everybody's ability is... is it's all different. It's, it's, Some people say you can... sliding scale. So, so the reason I was surprised, somebody said to me, you could put an image in your head like that and close your eyes and see it? See, some people, many people can't. 
So that's why we came up, I came up with this idea. I think this is more of a universal learning with this, with this type of... Well, it's basic. Right now, it's, it's for, mm -hmm. for you to teach somebody that is basic. And as time goes on, maybe that person will uh, decide on how to kind of keep it in their mind or write it down a different way or right. whatever they want to do. Right. But I think I find, I, hopefully this works for most people and... and um, but, th but every once in a while, there's a different type of a learner that comes to me, and I try to work with that person. Right, for them I, to understand their way. I'll give you a for instance. So we, had a, we had a person, I won't mention the name, uh, male or female, and the person was born with all their organs reversed. Everything was reversed. Their heart was all air. Everything was reversed, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Right? And their brain was reversed. And they were a lovely person, right? Lovely person, but so so it's almost like they were seeing an X an X ray. Does that make sense? A mirror. Yeah. A mirror. So so um, that was challenging to to teach somebody with that type of. Um, I'm not going to use the word disability because I don't think that's what. No, I don't think it is. A disability. This was a very smart person. As a matter of fact, this person. I won't tell you what they did, but they used that particular uh, approach. Th approach in their job and it worked out great for them so i love when i i love when people are a little different and then they excel this person excelled but teaching was a little difficult i must i must say that some people they're they're um they're a little bit more challenging than others that's all i'll say well i think sometimes too is that you know upholstery is not something you do every day and there's always little tricks to certain yeah. Techniques you're trying to say. What do I do with this? What do I do with that? Yeah. You know. I, mean, I love upholstery because I I think the way I present it, I can break the I can break it down. I used to work for uh, I used to work with people with disabilities, mm -hmm. and and teaching them upholstery, and I realized from the very first day that like for Jimmy I can say Jimmy his step I'm going to give you step one step two step three. This has nothing to do with intelligence, by the way. Right. But, but Jimmy, because your mind is clear, maybe, or whatever, for, for the God blessed you with the clear mind, you could take most of those steps. I can walk away. I can come back when they're done. Mm -hmm. But with certain people with disabilities, they, 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 they need a, more of a breakdown. So I had to get used to breaking down the steps into tenths. So the first step that I gave you, in some cases, I would have to break that down into ten steps. Stop right. right from the very beginning and, and you know, work right. it work it up, you right. know. So I think that's why the kit that we're offering on Broadway Upholstery School mm -hmm. is really kind of neat because I think I've incorporated what I learned into the, into the instructions on how to do that. So is there any more questions before I go to the next, next one, Patrick? Not at uh, the moment. Interesting how large the measurements were. So, oh, I wanted to also just follow up with Janine about she's, she's questioning, not questioning, but she says it's interesting how large the measurements. What you have to remember with measurements is you're always going from the furthest point. So the furthest point plus three inches. Now remember on that tub chair, on the arms in particular, it rolls to the back and rolls around the front. So you have to take that measurement, you have to take that into, into account, right? Okay. And, and those measurements did look big, and they were like 50 or 60 or something like that inches. The, it, it, tub chairs can really waste a lot of fabric. Um, somebody's asking about a style of a chair, but I can't answer that because I can't see a picture. I have a good question here. Okay, Patrick. It's you, from Lucas again. Okay, Lucas. So you also know... Uh, do, do we offer one-on-one -on -one classes, like a 30-minute or one-hour consultation to discuss a project? Uh, we haven't really discussed that. I think. But I think the closest thing to that is the custom video. Because yeah, we Lucas. Because one one-on-one yeah. pictures and everything. Lucas, that, that's right. Patrick said um, the closest thing we have right now is um, what some people have already taken advantage of, and we're happy about that, is the customized video. So what that is, it sometimes there's a little bit of a wait. You know, you purchase it on, on BroadwayUpholsterySchool.com, and then you wait for me to catch up for when a piece comes in that's similar or exactly the same. I do it for you, and I give you the video. It's your video, nobody else's. I'm not going to resell it, right, Patrick? Oh, unless they want to share it, up to them. So you can share it if you want. That's fine, but but the the the, the, the promise is that it's yours. 
So, um, thank you, Lucas. Lucas must be local if he's asking that question. Um, so, I think at this point, uh, I'm going to have Jimmy come in and what? talk to Jimmy a little bit. Again? Yeah, uh, because this is your chair, Jimmy. Uh, am I sitting or standing? What you can you stand like? up. You can stand up over here. <clears throat> So, Jimmy, um, how do you think it's going for you with this chair? Um, I think it's going pretty well. This is definitely interesting for me because, again, uh, I just didn't have any idea of how all this was going to kind of come around. This is another new lesson in upholstery yeah. for me. Yeah. It seems like when I grab a chair, hey, yeah, okay, no problem. Like, oh, no, Jimmy, this is what you got to do. And this, you know, you're thinking, okay, it's going to be one, two, three, but it's actually four, five, six. So how do you apply skills that you've already learned to something different? That's, that's what yeah. you're asking. That, that's hard. And that it, comes with practice. It does. This is, this is something new. I, you, you may not see another chair like this for a while. Right. You may yeah. see variations. Yes. This is very unique, unique chair. Okay. So things come in the, in the shop like this. I'm going to actually show people this project that I've been working on, this plaid project. And, uh, but I do want to, uh, while I go away, Jimmy, um, I want you to show people what you used as a center point on that. Which, how, how did you decide, how did we decide well, the center on that, on that? Due to the little bit of complex pattern of this uh, fabric, we centered, if you see the vines here with the way they are, we centered the one vine that was away from the others and basically centered that piece, used that as the piece from the decking, as well as the uh, the back, and as well as even on the sides, we centered that too as well. So it's all kind of, uh, that's one of the things that I say with this pro this particular fabric, you have to kind of line things up to make it look right, otherwise it's going to be, the center is going to be here, and then you have the center over on this side, and people look at it and will say, oh, geez, uh, something off with that, and of course, and they can tell right away. Oh, absolutely. So what happens with people, even even an inexperienced eye, can pick up on things like that. Yeah, well, they, people just know if something's not right. Yeah. There's it's an just... old story in the art world where somebody, uh, a, a museum, you'd think they would know better, mm -hmm. bought this, uh, sta let's let's say the Statue of David, but I know it wasn't that. But it was a famous sculpture. Okay. It was a, 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 a figure, a human figure. So they mm -hmm. have it in the, they're really proud of it. They have it in their lobby. Mm -hmm. And for, for many, many, many people coming by just say, I'm just looking at it, it doesn't look quite right. Or, you know, mm -hmm. they could, nobody could put their finger on it, but it turns out it was a fraud. Oh my God. Yeah, and people, even an average person sometimes can have an inkling that something just isn't right. Yes, yeah, so I've seen that before and it doesn't look like that yeah. type so of thing. Yeah, so if you had your stripe off-centered here and then had it centered up there and then with the cushion and then people are going to notice that. Yes. So, so I just want to show, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. They're going to throw in a few comments here. Okay. Uh, Lucas is from uh, Belgium. Belgium. Uh, learning how to upholster pieces that I sell in my store from following your videos and taking advice from you. Thanks. Oh, oh and you're no welcome. advice from me. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Erica is tuning in. Okay. Hi, she Erica. She doesn't any questions, but she's out on the go, so she doesn't, can't really ask me questions, but she's watching. Oh, good. I'm glad. Thank she you can't for can't answer a ton of her questions, so she can always go back and check those out. Oh, that's right, Patrick. Uh, if you didn't hear Erica, he just said that um, we have answered a lot of your questions, hopefully all of them, um, and then you can watch the watch this again to get the answers. But So I just wanted to show Jimmy. Is there any more questions or comments yet, Patrick? No, no, no. Okay. So we're just going to turn this to show people on this side. Jimmy, can you grab that side piece for me? I know it's for that side. So, so what I wanted to show, what we did was, we made sure that, you notice how you have a vertical stripe this way. It's not turned this way. Right? Okay. So the reason for that is the loose cushion has to go on, right? And the right. boxing on the cushion is going to come this way, so we're going to try to match it. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. so that's, that's what's unique about an open armchair, is that you have, to, you have to have it finished on three, there's three places it has to be finished and look good. Okay. You know, whereas if it was a regular upholstered chair, these arms are upholstered, yeah. you just have to worry about the front. But your concern, the reason that makes this a little, it, and it looks so easy, it really does. But the thing is, what makes it hot is that it has to look good from the sides and from the front. Right. That's what makes it hot. Right. So that's what, and we have to do a fitted seat on this. We have to do mitered corners. 
Yeah, uh, again, I thought with the uh, the seating, the cushion that we have, which is kind of a little new style. You, it's right behind you if you yeah. want to grab it. This so this is, is the loose cushion, the old fabric. If you look at it, it's uh, cut in the corner, which is something new, but also it's cut in the middle around the... Uh, almost looks like a puzzle piece. Yeah, exactly. So it's really so kind of So you can put that up there if you want to. I mean, just just fit it in there. So so the advantage to that is it kind of locks. It kind of locks in place. Right. Right. Um, but we're going to build this up a little bit more in the front. It needs cotton, as you can see, and um, it's going to meet better. And we're going to cut this. We're not going to use this as. A Patrick, do you know? I'm not sure. I don't think so. So, Lucas, I would encourage you if you think you've learned some things on the YouTube videos. And I, I apologize. The video just went out, but I fixed it. So. Oh, we want to apologize. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I want to get back to Lucas from there. Lucas, Lucas, I think it's wonderful that you've watched the YouTube videos and you're able to learn enough knowledge to actually do things. That's wonderful. But if you haven't signed up for the online classes at BroadwayUpholsterySchool.com. I would advise you to do that because we really get in depth. Now the difference is you got a guy like Jimmy asking all the right questions. He's like you. So you learn through the questions. I, um, when I'm teaching, when I'm trying to do a YouTube video by myself, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm forgetting uh, how I, you know, some of the things it's mechanical. It's too mechanical. This is what I'm trying to say. Right. The YouTube videos are shorter. Definitely. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky, you're going to get an hour-long video on YouTube on a, how to do a uh, chair. Right. But our videos, are, uh, let's see, um, the tub chair is going to be nine. I think, if I'm not mistaken, 23 hours, Patrick. Oh my God. Yeah, it's a wow. nine nine classes. Nine classes at about an hour. How many is this? Chair you're going to get up there too because you'd be surprised. We, usually, we design these classes at six weeks, and we that's the price structure six weeks. Right, I remember six. But they're weeks extending, and and we're not charging extra for that. But your on your class, we might do two or two more extensions on your. You know, we might go to eight on yours. Wow. So, um, and you wouldn't think so such a small chair, but he had a lot of restoration. So that's what you're going to see. You're going to see a lot of different restorations mm -hmm. on these classes. And we're going to be posting more and more. And some people have taken advantage of the lifetime subscription. Which I think lifetime? Is, yeah. You offer that? Yeah. You're kidding. Which I think is a really good deal. Wow. They, yearly. Yearly. Oh, sorry. Yearly. Lifetime. lifetime. Oh, we have a rate for that too. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just come up with a new price. Oh, we just had a blooper. A million dollars. <laughs> is right. that a blooper or, or what is you that? You can retire now, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is yearly because, I, you know, in 10 years, where am I going to be? Uh, still here. <laughs> Patrick will be your lovely, your, your handsome assistant by then. <laughs> I want to show what I've been working on today, which is really cool. So, the, one of the definitions, every job description, the government has, for every job in this country, America, I don't know about Belgium, Lucas, I'm sure they do, but they have a job description, um, like, uh, you know, uh, standard stuff, you know. The upholstery job description, the first sentence is, must be able to problem solve. Mm, but yeah. isn't that true for every job, Jimmy? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think from uh, simple, uh, you know, making coffee to uh, handling customers to yeah. uh, engineering. Everything I mean, is look. a problem solving. But I, I think in upholstery, in all fairness, I have things walking through this door, like you, like today, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. um, a customer walks through the door with six slip seats, mm -hmm. plaid slip seats, mm -hmm. that were covered in this fabric. And she wanted them recovered again. The only problem is she only had, and they were all stained. The, mm, the old was all stained. Yeah. So, so they, none of them were any good. She's got kids. What can I say? So she says she only had, she had a, a yard extra fabric. One yard. Wow. Right? She cut it close. And she says, can you do anything for me? I said, well, I'm not. I'm a magician, you know. But See, guess what, You should Jimmy. have said to her, Kevin. Guess Nothing what, Jimmy. up my sleeve. I'll be right back. I want to show you something. Just <laughs> don't give comments and questions too. Okay, but I'm. Janine just tuned in. Oh, I just catch you guys right at the end. One of these times we'll we'll go live and you'll be able to watch the whole thing. Yeah. How you doing, Janine? Uh, Eric has a question. Hold on one second. Here. 
Look at that. A one yard of fabric. I managed to get all six slip seats. You How did I do that? Saved it. One yard. Okay, so the, the one yard was actually two inches more, which saved me. It was 38 inches. I split that in half. Just managed to get it over here for four of them. But guess what I did on the other two? What? I took the fabric off very carefully and I reversed it. This is a reversible fabric, so I reversed the fabric and guess uh, uh, with the customer's, you know, approval. approval, same amount of money, I didn't charge you extra for doing this, but it was a little bit of a hassle. Jimmy, I reversed the fabric. Can you tell Jimmy which fabric I reversed the two chairs on? Is there any way you can tell? Because remember, that was underneath, that didn't get any use, right? Wow. What do you think, Jimmy? Six seats. Wow. In, in one yard, that's not a stain. That's just a piece of fabric. Can you believe that? Jimmy, while you're looking at that, being amazed, I'm going to answer Janine's question. What is the well, question? Janine doesn't have a question. It's Erica has a question. Erica has a question. So I am working on mid-century cocktail chairs. I texted you pictures. I rebuilt the seat exactly as it was, but I still feel still feels kind of flat. Should I add more cotton or foam? She I love the yearly, her yearly subscription. Oh, great. I assume that you're at the mo you, you, you haven't added the fabric yet. So, um, and you know that if you've watched my videos, I always say that muslin is overrated to use over uh, fabric unless you're doing over horsehair. Um, in this case, you can pin tack some muslin on just to feel it. I think you probably have done that. Um, I think you can add filling, no problem. I think what you have to be careful for, though, aesthetically, you can overdo it. You know, we have pieces that you, you have to keep within the aesthetics of the piece. Keep that in mind. And, of course, research is important. You need to go online to look at other ones that have been done. Um, I hope that answers your question, Janine. Um, so is there another comment? Well, I've got a cool comment from Lucas he responded to. It says, we have to take an official, official test in Belgium to be qualified. A bit difficult to follow a 400-hour course if you're running a small business by yourself. Mm -hmm. So channels like yours help immensely. Oh, that's great, Lucas. Anything we can do further uh, to help our, ben our Belgium friends? Uh, and uh, Eric has followed up said, no fabric yet. These are covered in muslin while I wait for the fabric. Oh, perfect. And you can, you can experiment now. You can take the muslin off. You can add fabric. You can put new, I mean, uh, add cotton. Um, I do recommend AAA cotton. I do, if you've seen the videos, you know, AAA cotton natural, not, uh, AAA is the natural cotton. It has more uh, oomph to it. I don't like the synthetic cotton because I, I don't think it provides enough of that oomph, you know. So you can do that. You can experiment. I, I think you feel free to experiment. Keep in mind, though, that if you're going to go over the muslin, I don't recommend you go right over the muslin. Okay, keep this in mind. I recommend you put a layer of cotton or a half a layer of cotton over the muslin, then put your fabric on. So remember that that will add more, more stuffing, right? So I hope that answers her question. Jimmy, what do you think? Is that amazing? That one yard of you fabric? You did a fantastic. I can't tell the difference. It's not. I honestly, I would say all these are brand new. You know, in 42 years of business, this is what I'm saying about problem solving. I've never even entertained that you could take a fabric off a dining room chair and flip reverse it. it and have a fresh piece of fabric underneath. You now, get, now you, that's luck. Isn't that unbelievable? Luck it took that. me 42 years to learn this lesson. Guess what else happened though? I had to be careful on this, right? I had to be careful because when I flipped when I flipped this, it's a reversible fabric, right? Okay. But when I flipped it, mm -hmm. the the stripe this stripe ended up on the right side. So you had to do it with all Before of it was flipped, it was on the left side. So I had to make sure that when I did them all, I had that right stripe on. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. That's, again, you know, lining up, especially like a pattern like this. You wanted it to be that one chair where you did not do it that somebody would say, hey, by the way. Jimmy, um, you're a wise man. That's why we have you in the online classes. Okay. By the way, we will be looking for people. If there are local people watching, we may, we may be interested in, although we're happy with Jimmy, and I'm sure Jimmy will be here for a while. And Michelle. And Michelle. And Michelle. Um, we're always her. looking for personalities um, that, that might come in and do uh, other shows, Jimmy. So um, 
Or we get personalities within the pieces of furniture too that we do, right? Yes, they, they seem to have a bit of a history, especially with the with things I seem to carry on with. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that, that, that unless there's uh, some other questions, Patrick? That seems to be it. Uh, this was a fun episode. We had a lot of catching up to do. I feel as though I haven't touched on a lot of things and I, I know that we still have to get our schedule right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we kind of, uh, well, well, the holiday kind of, yeah. And I know people, people in the new year, we'll have more of a schedule with these in the new year, Patrick. So we're going to have more of a schedule, but, um, I think that that, that would be more interesting to have more questions while we're doing these shows. Mm -hmm. Um, that's what they're all about. Live, live questions. But we have found out a lot of people watch this afterwards who can't w w different time zones and everything yeah. else, which is fine. And that's why we have these questions. And right. Jimmy, thank you for joining us. Hey, no problem. Another guest appearance on my book. You know, that's, <laughs> it's, that's, it's always fun. So we'll see you next time. Thanks. Yeah, these came up.